So how's your harmonic technique? We oftentimes go on and on about physical acumen on your instrument and how fast your fingers can fly and what you can do with that sort of technique. But today we want to talk with you about your harmonic technique. That is, do you know the things about tonal harmony that will allow you to do what you want to do with the song you're writing as it relates to maybe fighting writer's block or taking an idea and expanding and evolving it or reharmonizing an existing song and so much more. Well, today we're going to talk with you about how to do all of these things. So we have this simple progression that we have here, just C, D, and then G, just a four, five, one progression in the key of G. And that's what we're going to start with. And you'll see what we do with it using the harmonic techniques that we're going to teach you today. Check it out. So let's introduce our first evolution of our original progression. And we're going to do that by way of what's called substitutions. So we originally have a C, D, G, right? What we can do in, in turning C, D, G, G into uh, A minor, D, G, and E minor using substitutions. Here's what I mean. Rather than use this C that exists in the subdominant region of our map, we're just going to swap it out for another diatonic chord in the same region. This is a technique you can pretty much always use, but you have to consider the melody. That's why I say you can pretty much always use. In the case of this C to E minor, uh, very, rare, very rarely are you going to have any problems swapping out a four chord uh, for a two. We'll get into more of what that means in a second, but let's look, look at the chords by way of their name for right now. We'll talk about functions in a second. So now we're going to go A minor, D, G, and we're going to replace the last G with E minor, the sixth chord of our key. So let's go into what I mean by the two and the six by changing the way we're viewing the map from these chord names to their function. It's really going to help us to see these chords that we're working with here, not by their seemingly arbitrary alphabetical designation, uh, but rather their function, their purpose within the key. Because a G chord in the key of G has a very different purpose than a G chord in the key of C. So I've switched the map to look at it functionally. So C, D, G, G would be four, five, one, one. And now what we're doing is swapping out the first four chord for the two of that key. And a consequence of our key being G means the two is A minor. So we have A minor, we kept the D, we kept the first G, but then we swapped it out for its six. Again, because they're diatonic chords that appear within the same region of the map. So the takeaway here is if you have a chord in one region and you want to spice it up or mix it up or evolve it, one really easy thing to do is just swap it out for one of its neighboring diatonic chords within the same region. All right, so let's take it another step further and talk about our next technique, which is going to implement the use of sevenths, seven chords, and extensions. In some of these chords, we're going to use uh, nines. We're going to add the ninth extension to a couple of these chords. So as it relates to sevenths and nines or any extension, it's really, really important to consider the chord chord scale pairing that goes with that chord. So this is sort of a, uh, a, a deep topic and we have plenty of content on this. So if you're interested more in chord chord scale pairings and how chord scales can inform not only the chord and the function of the chord, but the extensions and notes you can add to it, check out some of our other content. I'll explain it as succinctly as I can right now by saying we're in the key of G. All right, so any note you're going to add as we're looking at our chords in this basic diatonic map, any note you're going to add to a chord is probably going to have to come from that scale. So if I want to make C a seven chord, I'm not going to make it a dominant seven because B flat is not in C's chord chord scale pairing. B natural is. So I would get a C major seven if I wanted to do that. So having said all that, let's talk about a couple chords that we can add sevenths or ninths to. How about the A minor that we just added into the mix 
a few seconds ago. So what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna make it an A minor seven. And if you're at all confused about any of this theory, um, the good thing about mapping tonal harmony pro is it, it narrows down the options for you and you don't have to worry about making a wrong choice. So here's what I mean by that. I can hold down on this A minor right here and a drop down occurs where I have all of the viable options as it relates to the rules of music theory that we're supposed to follow. And you don't have to worry about making a wrong choice. Unless, of course, it doesn't really jibe well with your melody. But that's, that's up to you to determine. Uh, so I have, I have all these options here, A sus 2, A, A minor add 9, A minor 7, A minor. And they're all informed by the Dorian uh, mode or scale. So we're going to choose the A minor 7 Dorian option here. And that's going to change A minor into A minor with a little bit more color and texture. And let's do the same thing to the E minor at the end of our progression. Let's use an extension this time. Let's use a nine. So once again, I'll just hold down on the E minor and I have all my options all informed by Aeolian. And I see what I want right here, A minor, E, I'm sorry, E minor, add nine. This is going to introduce an F sharp into the chord, which is gonna give a really cool sound. All right, so now let's see what our progression sounds like with sevenths and ninths. So now let's mix the two techniques we just talked about together, substitutions and sevens and extensions. So now that we have two tools at our disposal, what this might afford us is the option to maybe expand our chord progression from a simple four measures, or uh, I shouldn't say simple, but just from four measures to eight, let's say. So now that I have more uh, dice in the game, if you will, I have more options to do what I wanna do with my progression. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna use uh, the extensions, the substitutions, uh, the addition of sevenths chords. As a matter of fact, let's introduce a seventh chord to a C right here. And as I was saying in my last example, this would be a major seven because of the chord scale, uh, chord chord scale pairing that informs C. So C Lydian doesn't have a B flat, it has a B, but again, not to worry about all that because Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro gives me the viable options here. So there is what I want, C major seven. That gives us a really cool color to that sound too. So now you're gonna see how we use that C major seven in a second, now that we have eight bars to play with. But one thing I wanna note right now is, uh, now that we do have eight bars and we're mixing up the techniques, this might reinform what you wanna do with your melody or it might even evolve the melody as it's evolving the harmonic progression too. So let's take a listen to what we have with our eight bars of music using C major seven now. So we're gonna basically bring C back into the game. We, we got him out of here, but now we're gonna bring him back in measure five, as you'll see in this example. Okay, so for this next version of our progression, we're gonna talk about sus chords and alternative paths and how considering your target is very important when doing that. One thing I'm gonna to have to do with our map is view it at its next level, basically. So we're at the most basic diatonic level of the map. In order to use some of these techniques I just mentioned, we're gonna to need to go to the three, three chord and deceptive uh, view of the map. So as the name implies, it introduces the three chord of our key, which in this case is B minor seven. And it also shows us a few options up here as it relates to the condensal six four technique and uh, the, 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 the five seven sus chord. So this is actually one of the chords we're gonna use and substitute uh, in this iteration. So we're gonna leave the first four bars of our progression alone. And we're gonna apply these techniques to the last four bars. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep A minor seven D, G to E minor nine, our two, five, one, six. And what we're gonna do here is go C major seven, as we had in our last version, but here's where we're gonna sw switch it up a little bit. We're gonna go with a D seven sus four here. So we're gonna substitute out D with D seven sus four to do that. And here's where we're going to start to consider our target 
to introduce our next chord. This next chord is not really a substitution, even though it may seem like that. Let, let, me, let me show you what I mean. So, in the case where we swapped out G for E minor 9, we were just considering uh, the region of the map and what neighboring chords there were, and we used that to inform our choice to make a substitution. What we're going to do now is consider our target and use that to inform what chord we're going to use. So this is, we're going to, we know we're coming to E minor 9. We know we're targeting E minor 9. What is a way to get there? Well, this little stepping stone in between the two regions, B minor 7, our 3 chord, is that way. So I'm considering the path, I'm considering how do I want to get to where I'm going, and I'm seeing very clearly on the map, almost quite literally, that this B minor 7 is a stepping stone from the region we were just on, D7 sus 4, B minor 7, E minor 9. What this also does is something really cool with our bass line. It introduces this movement of a fifth in the bass. And if you followed us at all, we've uh, talked ad nauseum about proper bass movement, and that being either stepwise up or down, or by way of a fifth or fourth up or down. So having said all that, check out our newest version of the chord progression. Next, let's talk more about bass lines and writing from that perspective of considering your bass lines and how essential slash chords can be when you're trying to do this. So with uh, that in mind, bass movements and slash chords, let's, let's change around what's going on in measures five and six to introduce either stepwise or fifth movement in the bass and at the same time using slash chords. Uh, and slash chords can have a really cool, interesting color in and of themselves. Uh, paired with them making really nice bass lines, it's a win-win proposition. So what we're going to do is change this A minor 7 in measure 5 to an A minor 7 over G. In mapping tonal harmony, I can get the app to voice the chord the way I want to with these inversions using these, uh, these shapes down here. This seven-sided symbol, this heptagon, indicates the seventh will be the bass when I play the chord. So there you hear the G on the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing with this D. I'm going to use the triangle, the three-sided shape, because I want the third, the F sharp, to be my bass note here. All right, And where that's going to go next is uh, the B minor seven going to create a movement of a fifth. And where that's going to go next is the E minor 9, another movement of a fifth. So remember we talked about stepwise movements and fifths and fourths. I say fifths and fourths because when you invert a fifth you get a fourth. So they're essentially functioning exactly the same. So if you're getting a fourth in your baseline movement and you're like, ah, no, that's a good thing. So we're going to listen to the progression again now that we have all this really cool movement going on in the bass and all these cool new colors by way of these inversions and slash chords. All right, so we got a few more iterations to go, and these next few use a couple of my favorite ideas and techniques. And one of those is secondary dominance. We're going to have to change the view of our map to see all the secondary functions of our current key. So let's do that. We're going to go from three level, uh, three and deceptive to secondary dominance. So now I have all these chords show up that weren't there before. Well, they were there, we just really couldn't see them. So we spoke a little while ago about considering your target when using certain techniques. When it comes to secondary dominance, that is essential. Not only that, it's going to force you to consider your target even sooner in your journey. So in measure five, we have this C major seven. And in measure eight, we know we're gonna culminate everything on this E minor nine. I'm going to start considering that fact, the, that we're culminating on the E minor nine in measure eight. I'm going to consider that as soon as measure five, as soon as I am playing this C major seven. Once I know I'm on this chord, and I want to be here, 
I can start to consider what sorts of things I can do in the intermediate space in between those two chords. And what we're going to do with that intermediate space is introduce a 251, a, a 2 of 6 to a 5 of 6, 2 6. So a great way to target any chord is to do a 2 5 that chord. You know, we did it earlier when we did A minor 7 D to G, that was a 2 5 1 of G. We're just going to do the same exact thing to E minor add 9. We're going to consider E minor add 9 as our target just as we considered G our target earlier. And the great way, or the great thing about mapping tonal harmony or seeing it on a map is you get to see where these two fives are as it relates to any chord, especially in this view. So a two five of G is as we said before right there. But now in this view, we have all these little like mini maps. Uh, so in other words, a let's look at our, our four chord, C. A two five of C would be D minor seven, G, C. We have the same sort of clockwise movement around this little mini map as we did our main map earlier. So having said that, let's do that to E minor 9. Let's do that to the last chord of our progression in measure 8. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with the C major 7 measure 5 that we had before. And I'm going to use the 2 of E minor 9, F sharp minor 7 flat 5, to the 5 of E minor 9, B7 or B7 flat 9. We're using a B7 in our progression, but it's only because we're not adding an extension to it. But if you wanted to, you could. But consider the melody. And that's going to take us to E minor add 9. So now we have this. 4, 2 of 6, 5 of 6, 6. So now considering our target and considering it early enough to use this technique is going to yield us this. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, this is when we get to use one of my other favorite techniques, and that's borrowing. And along with that, we're going to introduce the idea of what a half cadence is. This is really useful when you want to set up going to a new section of a song, whether it's a bridge or a chorus or even the ending, an outro. Uh, along with those two new techniques, we're going to reuse inversions and sevenths and extensions and the use of a sus chord. So let's start off with the A minor 7. So again, the use of a seventh in measure 1. And then from there, we'll go to the D7 sus 4 that we talked about earlier also. So here in measure 3, let's introduce a new chord using some of the techniques. Well, two of them at the same time that we talked about before. Uh, extensions and inversions. So let's go with G and change it to a G add 9, right? Uh, what's more, let's put it in first inversion so that the bass is B. A cool, really uh, nice texture to the chord. And then from there in measure 4, we'll go to the E minor add 9 again. That'll bring us back to the A minor 7 that we started with in measure 1. And from here on out, we get to talk about two of our new techniques. Borrowing from other modes and half cadence. So what we're going to do in measure 6 is that technique I'm so fond of, borrowing from minor. So we're going to do it to the D7 sus4 uh, that we had here before, but we're just going to have a slightly different take on it. We're going to approach this D7 sus4 from the perspective of us not being in G major, but from being in G minor. And what that does is reinform uh, the chord by way of a new chord, chord scale pairing. So what we're going to have to do here like I said, Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro has already narrowed down all the options for us as it relates to what we want to do with these options, and including this technique here, borrowing from minor. What I'm going to get here is a D7 sus4 flat 9. Really cool new color and texture to our chord, and we got that by way of borrowing from minor. In the next measure, measure 7, we're going to use that G add 9 over B again, which brings us to our, tech, our next technique that we're going to implement and measure eight. So half cadence is basically when you target the five chord and make that seem like a point of resolution, even though in certain contexts or most contexts, it's not. How do we do that? 
Well, by way of our secondary dominance and also making sure that the five chord is not a dominant seven because that just introduces more tension that makes it feel unresolved. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that the D is just a normal D and I'm going to get to it by way of its five. And I can very easily find that on my map by going to the dominant region of D and I see my A7 there. So that's what we're gonna reintroduce in not only measures eight, uh, but we're also gonna add it in measure nine too. So we'll hang out here for a couple bars, build the tension a little bit, and then seemingly resolve it to D. Well, we're resolving it to D, it's just not necessarily resolved within the key we're in. And what this is gonna allow us to do is go somewhere else, go to a different place afterwards quite easily. Check out our newest iteration using all the techniques I just mentioned. So now that we've gotten all of our techniques out there, to get to the point where, where you just heard, uh, let's use a couple of them to write ourselves an outro. And remember where we, we started all of this too, by the way. We just came from a simple C, D, G, or functionally four, five, one, and now look where we are, right? So like, like I said, let's just take a, a, a couple seconds to maybe I don't know, borrow from minor again, and use a seven chord even, those two techniques, and figure out an outro for our song. Not only that, let's break the half cadence we just talked about in order to do that. So a second ago, we said we were gonna go with the half cadence A7 to D, and we did. Now, let's use the A7 before from before, and instead of doing that, go to the two chord of our, our key again, A minor seven, and then from there, our five, all right? So we've sort of like said, hey, we're, we're somewhere else, we're targeting D. We're gonna say, hey, actually we're really back in G again. Remember, a great way to establish the key is a, a two five of that key, or not even that, just the five of that key to the chord that you're targeting. But anyways, we're gonna go A minor seven to D, and the logical conclusion would just be go back to the one, but we're gonna do that, but not right away. Let's borrow from minor real quick before we go back to our one chord. On the map, it's really easy to do that because we have all of our chords from the major key on the outside of these circles and all of the chords from the minor keys on the inside. So if I want to, for example, go subdominant to dominant in a major key, I do that outside of the circle chords, A minor seven to D. If I wanna go subdominant to dominant in a minor key, I go inside. I can go C minor to D. Now it sounds minor all of a sudden. Or I could do what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna go E flat to F and then G major seven at the end. So hopefully now you can see what broadening your harmonic techniques can do for you. Things like seven chords, extensions, sus chords, substitutions, considering your target, borrowing from minor, using good bass movement. Any or all of these can open up all sorts of new doors for you and perspectives and you don't have to use all of them. You can use one of them and that might spark some sort of uh, inspiration that takes your song in some completely new and awesome direction. And the great thing about these techniques is you can always count on them. They're tried and true. You don't have to wait around for inspiration to come. You can be your own muse, or these techniques can. And just start throwing stuff at the wall, see what sticks, and go with what you like. Hopefully, all of this was helpful. We have tons of video on a lot of these concepts. If you're sort of in, in the fog on some of these ideas and you wanna dive into them further, check out our channel and uh, dig up what you can find there. 
Thanks for watching.